Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Joel Joshi Otero. I'm an oral and maxillofacial surgeon. I work in Burgos, Spain. And today we're going to see a sinus lift, a classical sinus lift with a bone grafting and the placement <clears throat> sorry, uh, of two dental implants. Well, if we take a look at here, well, we have uh, quite a tight space. Uh, we're talking maybe around three millimeters, which is uh, kind of uh, kind of uh, over the top of the the minimum space we should have uh, for proper bone grafting and and placement of implants. But uh, I couldn't do anything else, so we're going to place two implants, uh, three point seventy five millimeters uh, Nobel Parallel Tie Ultra. And at the same time, we're going to perform some bone grafting on it. As you can see, this is a very good sinus for grafting. We have a, a minor septum over here, but still, we, I think uh, we should be able to elevate the, the sinus membrane without any, any issues. We're going to do this in theater. It's a patient in her 60s. And, um, well, she's been without uh, these uh, premolars for, I think, over 15 years or so. No uh, medical, significant medical conditions. So let's take a look at this. We begin the procedure with a crestal incision following the sulcus, uh, making a white uh, base for the flap to be healthy. Subperiosteal dissection. I try to free the palatal side first. Then we go for the vestibular side. We use the Langen back to, to hold the flap. And then I start with a tungsten burr to make a, a small window of about eight millimeters uh, wide. We can also use uh, a piezo uh, if you feel more comfortable with, with this instrument. In my experience, uh, a tungsten burr will work just fine. Once you get the hang of it and, and you feel comfortable with the pressure you make on it, it's going to be perfect. It shouldn't give you any trouble. Now we start freeing the Snyder membrane from the floor of the sinus. This is my first uh, part of the procedure. I go all the time making sure that I'm touching the, the floor of the sinus with the tip of the freer and then I work myself around it. Every time going a little bit deeper. We perform some irrigation to, to make sure that the membrane is intact. And then we make sure we have made 
the periosteal dissection enough so we can we can uh, place the bone graft inside and there is no significant tension After making the proper dissection, I place a gauze for hemostatic purposes and start placing the, the self-tapping screws that are going to fix the X-Mark tracker in order for us to have a, a secure uh, system with the navigator. First I place one screw, then I check where it's going to be the second one. I have already studied the position of the roots. I use uh, my other hand to, to make a little bit more uh, pressure, always on the safe side. I screw them to a similar depth. You can see the first screw needs to be a little bit more uh, tightened and then I place the X mark tracker. Now we need to calibrate the navigator. For this we use a pointer. As you see, we mark, uh, we have made previously some landmarks on the software and now we mark them on the, over the patient and the system unites the planning with the patient using the, the cameras and the, and the markers. Generally around uh, three to five uh, marks are made. After that, here I check with my pilot drill that uh, everything is in order, and then I start the uh, normal uh, protocol for, for this uh, dental implant. Pilot drill, and then the first drill for the 14 and 15 premolar. It's interesting to notice that uh, the position of the surgeon changes significantly during this type of surgeries uh, in a navigated fashion. Here I set myself, I sit myself uh, over the head of the patient. My head is looking forward. You can see um, the screen. So once I know where am I, uh, in the oral cavity, I look at the screen and follow the yellow line that tells how deep I'm going. And then I can see the X, Y, and Z uh, markers uh, in the position of the implant. So I'm controlling um, all the time the direction of the burr. You see, it's like uh, a target. And then slowly I go in. I feel a good correlation between what the, once the cortex has been uh, perforated and the, the image in the screen. So it eases out once you go in. So it gives you a sensation of security. A 
after doing all the protocol for the drilling for the implant now I start with the bone scraping that I'm going to use uh, for bone grafting in the sinus so in this case we make a mixture between the autologous and heterologous uh, bone this is the scraping over the zygomatic uh, buttress and um, it's a pretty straightforward process I believe it improves a lot uh, in one year the result of the and the quality of the bone once you use in the treatment autologous uh, bone so nowadays I use it uh, regularly for almost all my patients I'm setting now the implant after placing the bone graft uh, in the sinus approximately two-thirds of the bone has been already placed so now I place uh, number 15 and, and 14 This is implant number 14. In this case, I am uh, not getting all the way in because the torque is going above uh, 35, I think. So I will do the last bit uh, manually. You can see slowly how I get in. It's not actually needed to place the implant uh, using the navigator but in this case uh, I wanted to make sure that there was uh, no no to limit the margin of error I finalized the process now Now the cover screws. And now the remainder of the bone graft that was uh, left. So I make sure that everything is set up so I can put the collagen membrane and close up. I believe this is a 25 by 30 millimeters uh, collagen membrane. It's a little bit bigger than, than what I usually use, but since it was uh, uh, quite a, a big defect, I, 
I covered also the alveolus with it, trying to make a, a layer uh, in between the periosteum that I'm going to suture and the bone graft. In this case for the flap I notice that there is a little bit of tension so I make a small cut over the periosteum with the scissor and now I can close the flap uh, freely, tensionless. Thank you everyone for watching. For the doctors, uh, feel free to make any comments uh, if needed. And see you soon.